When you optimize second stage pack and hold, you can reduce the variability, save energy, and provide more time for screw recovery. Always ensure that your gate seal time is determined scientifically using a scale. To properly conduct the gate seal test and determine approximate second stage time, establish a proper fill, record the part weight and second stage time, increase the second stage time, and then repeat. When plotting this data, you should generate a curve trend line to approximate the polymer's behavior. As you can see here, a trend line does not pass through every data point, but resembles the data. When interpreting the data, the two points on either side of the data stabilization is the gate seal. In this example, the gate seals between 5 and 6 seconds. 7 section seconds is chosen as the optimal second stage time. This will ensure that the gate is properly sealed when material variations occur, but material and energy will not be wasted by excessive packing. Again, there is a growing movement in the industry to reduce the energy consumed by all equipment. Much of this energy is wasted during the screw recovery process. In most cases, screw rotation consumes the most amount of energy on the injection molding machine. One of the best ways to reduce the energy consumed during the screw recovery process is to determine the tacking temperature. The optimal rear zone temperature is one where the polymer best sticks to the barrel, providing the best conveyance to the screw's transition zone. In the event you want to observe this, never look directly into the barrel as material can blow back and severely burn you. Be sure to use a mirror with a telescoping rod and always use personal protective equipment if you're observing this condition. Always use extreme caution. Now to remind you, establishing optimum temperature settings takes time to stabilize. Anytime you're involved with heat, it takes time. In fact, anytime you make a temperature change, be certain to allow a lot of stabilization time. To determine the optimal tacking temperature, First, set the rear zone to the lowest recommended temperature setting. Measure the screw recovery time. Increase the rear zone temperature and repeat these measurements until you determine a peak and drop in screw recovery time. Lastly, set the machine's rear temperature within the optimum recovery time. Then reduce the screw RPM to consume 80% of the overall cooling time. This will optimize your screw recovery while minimizing the energy consumed to melt and convey the polymer to the front of the screw. Surprisingly, there are many ways to improve the quality of your tooling and avoid damage, inefficiencies, and unscheduled breakdowns. In the following sections, we will discuss cooling and venting, tooling material, mold cavitation, ejection techniques, tooling specifications, and maintenance schedules. To maximize the efficiency of your mold cooling, use a separate controller for each mold half, ensure there's adequate water flow, Verify this flow using a flow meter. And lastly, check the temperature of the couplings using a surface temperature probe. Always ensure that there is sufficient mold venting. Dirty vents and inadequate venting can restrict filling and causing filling-related defects. 
A routine schedule for mold and vent cleaning is always a good practice for maintaining regular production. As a general rule of thumb, it's wise to clean vents at least once every eight hours. When possible, use wear resistant materials in any location where two surfaces meet. Wear plates on slide locks and graphite impregnated bushings are a great way to help ensure the longevity of your injection mold. As you can see on the left, the ball bearing loaded bushings are a great way to provide longevity to your injection mold with little additional cost. Many mold supplies will provide these bushings pre-installed when ordering your mold base. Galling is a situation that many injection molders and tool designers do not fully understand. This effect occurs when two materials of similar hardness slide against each other. Essentially what happens is both materials chew each other up and large chunks of metal will ball up and cause even more damage. Again, the cause of this condition is the use of materials with similar hardnesses. You are always better off using two dissimilar materials where one causes wear to the other. This may seem counterintuitive, but some of the materials with the highest wear resistance, like graphite and brass, have a very low hardness. Always make the easier mold detail from the softer steel material when possible. Always avoid using partial cavitation for your mold. Aside for re from reducing the productivity of the tool, blocking off mold cavities completely changes the balancing and filling characteristics of the mold. Such a change to the mold can often cause filling defects such as shorts, overpacking, and flash. There are many ways to improve the ejection of your injection molding parts. Molds, like the one shown on the left, can use push points to allow for larger ejector pins to be used. Undercut removal should be done with large components when possible to increase the durability and provide a better cooling of the action. Assisted ejection techniques such as air poppet valves can also be added to the mold to reduce the vacuum forces holding the part to the core. Other ways to improve part ejection is to add more draft angles whenever possible, drop polished cores in the direction of ejection, add radii, fillets, and supportive ribs. This will reduce warpage and will also increase the part's uh, rigidity. When building and repairing tooling, use standardized components when possible. Every time you have to manufacture a specific component, you lose time and spend more money. The more standardized the mold and its components, the easier it is to work on and repair. Materials you can standardize include mold bases, ejector pins, waterline fittings, slides and actuators, lifter components, bushings and bearings, and most of the ejection components. Whether you produce your tooling in-house or have it produced by a vendor, you should create a company-specific set of tooling standards. A tooling guide is a great way to help ensure your injection molds adhere to a consistent standard. Without a set of tooling specification, vendors and tooling departments can take extensive liberties in the manufacturing of your injection molds. If you'd like, just contact our office and we'd be happy to provide you with an outline of a guide that you can begin to use and adjust it so that it meets your requirements.